Ava because <laughs> of the line dancing. Do you love RPG grinding? Do you love it so much you want to bring that grind out of the game and into the physical realm too? Well, you're in the right place. I now have a set of hunter armor. But what good is hunter armor if you don't also have a pair of huge knives on a stick with which to bother larger than average lizards? Useless. I mainly use the insect glaive, A, because you get to do flips, and B, because you get to have a giant coleopter and strap to your forearm that you can throw at dinosaurs. <laughs> Why the hell would I pick literally anything else? Before we dive in though, we need to identify the constraints we're working with. Number one, the RPG proportion problem. Now I'm about 5'2", so it's not hard to make a prop that looks comically large next to me. But since this thing has to travel on an airplane and the largest dimension of my suitcase is 28 inches on the diagonal, it needs to break down. I decided on a modular design where the biggest piece, in this case the larger of the two blades, was just under 28 inches long. This helped to determine the scale for the rest of it since I had something to compare against. Number two. I have to carry this thing around all day, and I don't want to have to worry about overweight baggage fees. There are a multitude of ways to construct a prop weapon, but in this case the easiest and lightest option was for me to use EVA foam and PVC pipe. 3 quarter inch for the grip, a half inch for the blades, and reducer bushings to fit them into a 3 quarter inch unthreaded Schedule 40 coupling. These cost practically nothing at the hardware store, so go nuts. Number 3. Lights. The Blooming Glaive has some kind of glowing crystal embedded in one of the blades. This means that the blade has to be hollow to accommodate a light source of some kind, and it needs a convenient power source. For simplicity, I went with a remote-controlled RGB LED strip and a rechargeable 12 volt power bank. This is great because it means I don't have to worry about lugging around spare batteries all the time. Also it has USB out, so this sword does technically double as a phone charger. <laughs> The remote can cycle through color modes if I decide I want a different elemental effect for a photo or something. It also fits neatly into... It also fits neatly into one of my belt pouches. I started with a pattern. For me, dremeling EVA foam is a personal sensory hellscape. I hate the feeling of having the requisite mask and goggles on my face. I hate the disgusting sensation of the foam dust when it inevitably works its way into your skin, hair, and clothes. And I hate the mess it makes no matter how hard you try to control it. So I like to avoid it when I can. I opted to fit flat pieces together as seamlessly as possible to make a 3D form instead of suffering within a nightmare of my own creation. As I cut them out, I beveled the edges according to the angle at which I wanted to fit the pieces together. I don't know how else to explain it, so hope this diagram makes sense. I then carefully fit the pieces together using contact cement, making sure to insert and secure the PVC cores, as well as mount the LED strips before closing them completely. I also made a basic pattern for the scaly bit at the base of the big blade. I drew on the scale texture and used a wood burner to engrave the surface. Do this in a well-ventilated area. I've never actually used a wood burner, but the foam does tend to cake up on the tip, so I went with soldering iron rules and periodically wiped it off on a wet sponge. I then added spiky details with foam clay and heat sealed everything. I cut out some long foam rectangles for the straps. To make the leather texture, I crumpled up some aluminum foil and, after several unsuccessful attempts, uncrumpled it laid it over top of the foam, and ironed like a delicious cosplay panini. I glued everything together, brushed on a few coats of Mod Podge, and sealed it with Plasti Dip. The buckle is just a foam rectangle, and the studs are googly eyes. Cosplayer's greatest hits. Now the fun part. I painted the blades with some pewter metallic paint. I kind of dabbed it on with a rag. If you do too even of a job, it won't look convincing, so use this opportunity to reject order in your life. I just made sure to leave the bits that would naturally be dulled or recessed a little darker. For dimension, I took some silver rub and buff and applied it on highlight points to bring them forward a little. For the scaly base, I took some of the powdered iridescent pigment from my last video and mixed it into some clear gloss medium. I didn't use the airbrush method because I didn't really want an even application. Also I ran out of masking tape and didn't feel like leaving the house to get more. I switched gears to make the glowing gem. 
I could have done this fancier, like casting one out of resin, but at this point my flight was in about 24 hours, and I was not going to try to cure a mold and cast one in that amount of time. So instead, I made a faceted pattern and cut the pieces out of plastizote, once again bubbling the edges to make them join at an angle. Sometimes, spray paint melts the shit out of foamy stuff with alarming efficiency. I have no idea if this is the case for plastizote, and I was not trying to find out. So I painted it with a few layers of Mod Podge before spraying it with a clear finishing glaze, and then I glued it into place. Now I am not an advocate of the con crunch. Running yourself mind, body, and soul through a gauntlet of suffering in the name of cosplay does not make you cool or hardcore. Over the years, I have, in general, gotten much better about loving myself and knowing when to call it. That being said, it was at this point that I ran out of time after being awake for 24 hours and I had to cram everything into a suitcase and haul my sleep-deprived ass to the airport at butts a.m. to finish everything in the hotel room. And when you've reached the point of desperation that you're finishing props in your hotel room, you have no choice but to lose yourself to your most iniquitous impulses and commit atrocities. Thus began my late night frame perfect speed run of gluing and painting the feathers until they looked close enough. During this ordeal, I also took some superficial damage that I probably deserved. Last night, in a feat of buffoonery, unprecedented even for me, I sat on my plugged in hot glue gun and burnt a hole in my own ass. Casualties aside, I then proceeded to enjoy the rest of my Dragon Con, hoping nobody noticed there was an outlaw in their midst. But you can't stay on the run forever. When you get back from the con, you have to face the music. And bring your own sorry ass to justice. I drew up a list of charges against myself. First of all, I wrapped a piece of foam around the grip to make it girthier. It's hellishly crooked and covered in hot glue crust. Second, I cut out a raggedy pleather strip and wrapped it in a very pathetic looking braid. Third, I made a sorry excuse for a base on the smaller blade. I promptly ripped it off when I retired to the hotel on Saturday and yeeted it into the garbage, so I don't even have a video to show you. Here it is ruining a bunch of otherwise lovely photos over the course of Dragon Con. I redid the foam grip to be less disgusting. For the braiding, I cut out some long strips of pleather, folded the edges over, and secured them with clips instead of pins. Then I remembered it's hard to maneuver such a narrow seam allowance through my machine with clips, so I pulled them all off again and top-stitched, freehanding the folding as I went instead. You can sharpie some guidelines on the back of your straps to make this easier if you want. I braided this much nicer looking strap around the grip. Something about it looked a little flat, so I added some shading to the seams with my airbrush. For the leather blade detail, I made another EVA foam panini and made embellishments for more foam and googly eyes. I know not everyone has a fancy airbrush, so I did the leathery weathering the old-fashioned way for this part. I dabbed on a dark brown base coat and then dabbed on some lighter browns to make it look more natural. I also painted some light tan on the edges to match the weathering on the game model. I brushed rub and buff on the bits that are supposed to look like metal. Then I sealed everything with some satin clear coat. At this point I was probably just being nitpicky, but I wasn't completely happy with how I painted the feathers, so I went back through and did some touch-ups in acrylic paint where it seemed necessary. followed by more details with iridescent pigment mixed into an acrylic medium. And with that, we can call this thing done for realsies this time. The next logical step is of course the kinsect, and I haven't decided which one I'm doing yet because they're all so cute, so if you have a favorite one let me know in the comments. Maybe it'll help me decide. Thanks for following me on this gear grinding mission. I'm gonna go take a f***ing nap.